Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Your Drone Questions Answered. I'm John Dicko with the Drone Launch Academy, here to find the answers to your drone questions. These are questions that you, as the audience, submit. And I'm really excited for this topic. It is what is involved in a drone light show. I'm sure we've all seen it. Today I have with me Jacob Howard. He's the CEO of Illuminated Drones. Jacob, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I do want to start by just learning a little bit about illuminated drones, the type of services you offer, especially in terms of drone shows, and maybe kind of share a little bit of how you got that business started. So I kind of started back in the drone industry back in 2016. My first drone was a Phantom 3 standard that I bought at Walmart. <laughs> and I just, I went out there and I flew it that first night and I crashed right into a tree. I saw then I was hooked immediately. I was like, I, I gotta keep doing this. It's so much fun. I lived in North Idaho at the time. And so I was actually going out there and flying and getting just these amazing shots. And uh, because it's it's so beautiful up there, especially in the winter, Um, you know, we get 20 feet of snow on the mountain. And you can just fly your drone right up there and get some good shots. So I was just kind of like just immersed in the videography of it and stuff. And uh, from there, I actually started my own videography business. And I started doing that, incorporating drones, got a lot more into the drone industry, got into the FPV drone industry, uh, actually made some online courses on it, taught hundreds or actually thousands of people now across the world, how to like build and fly FPV drones. And then from there, a couple of years ago, a company uh, needed a pilot for their outdoor drone line show company that they were starting. I applied and <laughs> we got on a phone call and by the time we were done, he's like, you know, okay, I'm going to follow back up with you. And I'm like, so do you think like, you know, we're good? And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, you got it. He's like, so we do, yeah, you have more experience than anybody we've talked to. You know, the last how long everyone else is like, you know, they got a Mavic from their grandma for Christmas. And he's like, yeah. no, you, you actually know what you're talking about. You can talk specs and all that stuff. So I worked with them for a few months. In the end, it didn't kind of work out as a long-term thing. They kind of went a different direction with what they were doing. They're now a very successful outdoor drone live show company. Then from there, I kind of started consulting other businesses and kind of helping them get started in the drone live show industry. Because especially back then, there's no information on it. I spent months just trying to research, even trying to call the FAA and and like, you just could not get answers. You couldn't get details. Anybody who did want to talk to you was like, okay, hand over some money first and then I'll speak to you. So I, I, you know, we run the biggest Facebook group for it right now. And I, I've just helped a lot of people just get started in it. Cause I'm, that's kind of what I'm passionate about. Shortly after that, we had an opportunity to start Illuminate Drones, uh, with the indoor drone light show system. With Dude Perfect, went on tour with Dude Perfect, uh, you know, like top five YouTube creators in the world. And, uh, and we went and flew around uh, 60 of these every night or a hundred total. And, uh, we flew indoor drone light shows for them all of last summer. And then from there, we just started really picking up on the indoor. Now we're starting to branch out into outdoor drones. And we have this drone, um, that we are working with for the outdoor. Uh, we just did a show with this last night and uh, it was fantastic. And from there, we're kind of expanding, offering the indoor drone light show, the outdoor drone shows, and then also the systems. So we actually sell the systems as well so other people can get started in. It. Okay. So that's kind of like, you know, a real quick synopsis of like how, how we've gotten here. I love it. And wow, I mean, that's a lot. That's what, eight years you've accomplished all that? Yeah. That's really <laughs> cool, man. Congrats. Yeah. Thank you. Um, So, okay, drone light shows. I know we have nowhere near the amount of time to really get into the nuts and bolts of it, but I am so curious, and you provided a little hint by saying the word system. I'm honestly just going to pose the question and throw it at you. What is involved in a drone light show besides up to hundreds of drones? So obviously there's two sides of it. You have your indoor and your outdoor. There's a lot of similarities between it, but also at the same time, they are completely different worlds. The clientele, it's very different. It's a very different approach for each one. Since most people have probably seen an outdoor one, I'll kind of jump into that first. But yes, you're correct. System is a very important word. It is not just a drone that you buy. (laughs) It's not one you can get at Walmart for 50 bucks. It's a system that is specifically made for drone shows, for swarms. The software behind it is very complex, uh, very out there. You know, you have to get very specific about your software and everything, how you design the shows, the safety measures behind it. But pretty much how it runs is that, you know, you have a hundred drones out there, let's say, and they are each getting their positioning via GPS. When you are designing the show, you are designing each drone into basically a waypoint. So it's just like with like a DJI drone to where you You might fly a show and you select waypoints on where you want it to be. So you would kind of have like, okay, I want it to go here and I'm going to record that. It's kind of the same thing, but we do it in reverse. So we do it ahead of time. We're designing the show saying, 
hey, this is where each drone is going to go to form the show. And then each drone get it, gets its path when the show is uploaded to the drone. And then it does an autopilot from there. And it says, okay, at this second, I'm supposed to be at this location. So now I need to fly to that location. At this second, I need to be here. And you know, it does how many of those? I mean, it doesn't do it every second. It's sure that, you know, you yeah. yeah. how many milliseconds. And uh, it's just constantly making those adjustments, going from spot to spot and figuring out where it needs to be. And so all the, all the really hard work and stuff is actually done in the design phase. We'll have a lot of people like, uh, even if you ask ChatGPT, I can always tell when an article has been written by ChatGPT because they're like, drill light shows use AI and obstacle avoidance. I'm like, no, we don't. <laughs> See how expensive those drones would be? You know, actually, I do know because we, we have one that uh, we use for different services. And it's, yeah, it's like $5,000 for one drone to be able to have the, you know, the, the onboarding where AI can really handle its path and it can like smartly kind of move around. Eventually, we will get to that point to where, you know, AI is running the swarms and we can, you know, do live control of it. Uh, but right now, definitely the huge advantage is that we can design it beforehand and then go out and fly it. So that's kind of a nutshell on how it works. The design process is very similar for indoor. However, uh, we can't get GPS signal indoors. Um, so we have these little fun guys here. We call them anchors. And so these basically act like our satellites. They communicate over UWB. It's called ultra wide bandwidth. We set those up around the perimeter where the show is, and they kind of the satellites to triangulate where the drones are in space. And so we create our own GPS indoors, and then that's how the drones fly indoors. So 100% automated. Mm -hmm. You're mainly monitoring during the show itself. This design face is sounds like a lot of work when you're using up to a hundred drones, talk a little bit about that, about the, the work that gets put in the time that it takes. Are you going really one drone at a time? No. So fortunately there are systems out there where you do actually have to type in every single coordinate for every drone as you go through it. And that's actually what we started with indoor. That was the first software that was handed to us. And I was like, guys, this is impossible. I can't work with this because you know, you get to the show and oh, that truss is five feet lower than they said. Now I have to change the whole show. And if you, that would take another whole week then to go through and recalculate every single one hand by hand. So we actually developed our own software so that we can go in and, and the algorithm will automate that part of it. So you're doing the design and then the algorithm automates everything in between. All the transitions, making sure that they are safe, that they're going the right speed and you can adjust all that as you go. So it does the heavy lifting for you. And a lot of people will kind of say that and be like, oh, you know, it's, it's going to be this much money for a five minute show or something. I'm like, it's not the show that takes a long time. Like by the time I've shown up to, to, to fly the show, I've done 90% of the work. This is now the easy part. This is the cool part. You know, it's, it's the weeks before that you're perfecting the design and adjusting it because the client had a request. And it's all that work that really takes the time. Flying the show, that's easy. So it's all the work beforehand to program it, uh, maintenance the drones. Probably the people listening here, they might, they probably have like under 10 drones. And you still have like a lot of maintenance you got to kind of do on that. Imagine having hundreds or thousands, you know, to where you're going through and making sure props, you're checking props, you're checking motors. Like there's a lot of work that goes into it before you even get to the show. So for sure. But and, and yeah. that's even outside of the design, like the crazy work that goes into design. No, that, that you got another slice here called maintenance. Yeah, exactly. And so you are syncing these drones up with lights, with music. Is that all done within the system as well? So yeah, so we actually, um, I, I found a fun little thing that we can do. Um, we can actually time the lights to a beat. So if it goes boom, like the lights can actually light up. And that's great because like with our outdoor drones, we can take off the time code. So basically if, if they're running an event, we can actually, when they hit play on their music, it'll hit take off on our drone. So there's ways we can actually incorporate them together. We can't do that with our indoor drones yet, but we will soon. So we're actually developing a whole new indoor system because the current one we have has some shortcomings. And so we, now that we've had a lot of time in the industry, we're like, okay, what can we do to improve this and make it better? Very cool. And so I, I do want to get to this idea, this other kind of side of your business of selling the system. Tell me a little more about that, kind of who, who your clientele would be in that category and what that looks like. I mean, do they know how to work the system, operate it themselves? Yeah. So there's two different groups. Of course, there's people who are already in the drone light show industry and they're looking for a better solution. So they want our new indoor drones, our, our outdoor ones. So these guys right here, these can be set up just a meter away from each other. So like they can take off in a very small place. I mean, 
in the room I'm in right now, I could take off, you know, just in this room. So, cause they can take off so close to each other. Most systems, they need to set them a meter, three meters apart for takeoffs and stuff. So okay. they're really small, really lightweight. They handle really well in the wind and the system to set them up is just much, much faster. So me and one of my pilots, we set up 75 of these in uh, 17 minutes from unloading them from the van, setting up the ground control station, everything, 17 minutes. And for people who don't know, I recently did a show that was 190 drones and there were five of us with a different system. It wasn't with our new one, five people. And it took several hours to wow. set up. And so, so a 17 minute compared to, you know, a couple hours in the scenario, if we, you know, cut it down to the same amount of drones, it's a really, really cool and robust system it takes a lot less time to set up. And then we also have our indoor system, this one, as well as the new one that we're developing kind of the people we're reaching out to are people who are either in the drone space, because that's obviously good, like you can have that knowledge of it, or people who are in the event space who wanna add it to what they're doing. We definitely talk to people who are in neither one of those spaces, you know, and they're like, nope, we wanna start doing this. We think it's really cool. We wanna be a part of it. Absolutely, let's talk. So I will say the upfront cost is high. That's kind of the biggest thing. Like people are like, okay, that's really cool. I've had people contact me like, okay, I have a budget of 5,000. I want a hundred drones. And I'm like, I'm sorry, we're not talking the same language here <laughs> uh, because I mean, he's one of these drones is going to cost you about 1500 a piece. And then on top of that software, batteries, chargers, everything you need to add to that. For example, to kind of throw numbers out there so that people kind of have an idea. And once again, I'm one of the only people who will actually throw the numbers out there because everyone else wants to keep it all secret. I'm like, no, let's see how many people we can get into this industry. Let's grow it, you yeah. know? So, but if you wanted a hundred drones, I mean, you're looking at at least 200 K as like the upfront cost to really, to buy the drones and everything and get everything that's associated with that. What's amazing though, is that the markup for the shows are so good. So, you know, your average hundred drone show could go anywhere between 15 to 25 K depending once you've covered your costs of like the drones and stuff, you know, it's only going to cost you a couple thousand dollars to get people out there and get the drones there and set up and stuff. And so you could be walking away with 75% profit as far as on the actual work in the show itself. That's really good. And indoor is also kind of the same scenario to where, I mean, we fly the drones fit in a suitcase and we just fly to the location and we're able to then, you know, fly the shows and, and we make a nice markup on that to where we can then invest in more drones, invest in you know, developing a new system like we're doing this year so that we do offer a better option to clients every single time we show up. Hey, cool. And when you're selling this system to a client, is it coming pre-designed or is it something that they can design made easy so, for them to manipulate? Yeah. So there's two uh, aspects of it. We, when we're selling shows and when we're selling systems shows, we design it for them and it can, it's custom. There's a lot of people out there who like, they'll kind of nickel and dime, like the custom and like, oh, you got to pay us every time you edit or whatever. I'm just like, hey, I want to make the customer happy. Like, yeah. let's do something cool for them. Like, no, nope, the, the price includes, we'll make whatever show you want. Obviously there's some point where we have to go, okay, guys, yeah. we have to stop at some point. But that usually doesn't happen because when you're up front with the client about it, they're, they're more than happy to work with you. So we have that part of it where we're doing a show for a client, then it's all pre-designed and then they can ask for changes and we'll edit it. When it's a system, they're getting everything they need to get started, um, as well as training. We'll also okay. be giving them some shows that they can kind of learn with, but there's also a lot of things to tie in with, you know, part 107 waivers and the FAA and, you know, what you need to do all for that. Cause the part 107 waivers you need, that's about a three month process. Okay. So if anybody who is interested, like that's the first thing we want to talk about is, okay, let's get drones ordered and let's get your waiver approved. Cause like those are. Those are the two things because you can't really fly without that. that that's kind of the, the direction we move with people. That's one of the reasons I really like indoor as well is because we don't have to worry about that. the FAA has no jurisdiction over indoors. So we're able to do a lot more with some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, very cool. This is just not enough time to, to <laughs> talk about all the things I want to talk about. But one thing I do want to get to as we kind of close the discussion, you know, this is something you built yourself, this company, Illuminate Drones. By the way, to our audience, if you want to see some of this work that Jacob's done, uh, go to IlluminateDrones.com. You'll probably be just as mesmerized as I am and stare at uh, my screen for minutes as I've been doing. What advice do you have for our community at Drone Launch Academy, our audience who are honing their drone skills in order to apply it to their careers or even start a new career? What would you have to say to them? I have a lot of advice. Just <laughs> help. help. I'll try to kind of bundle it all, all together. I think a huge part of it has been, and what probably people can tell right now is, is my passion for what, what I'm doing. I love it. I'm not in it for the money alone. Obviously I want to make money. Everybody does, but it's, it's not my main motivation. Like I, I love seeing the excitement that people get when they watch these shows. We did a show last night 
and people were pulling over on the side of the road. The drones landed. They're all clapping. And they're like, thank you for letting us watch. That was amazing. And I just, I just love that. I love that feeling of like, okay, we're bringing joy to people. Like that's been, that's been my big thing. Like when we went on the, uh, the tour with Dude Perfect, 14,000 kids and their parents screaming and jumping up and down because we just finished the show. And that's just such an incredible feeling to be like bringing that passion to people. Um, so no matter what you're doing in the drone industry, if you bring passion to it, uh, I, I think not only does it make your sales a lot easier because people want to work with someone who's passionate about it, it's not even like working. Obviously, it's, it's hard work that I have to do. There's some very stressful times when I, I cannot think of anything I'd be ra rather be doing than what I'm doing right now. So I think that passion and, and serving the customer is, is really kind of what it, what it comes down to. I think that's been a huge part of our success at Illuminate Drones because we have seen some pretty wild success bringing, I mean, basically starting a whole new industry because indoor, like indoor drone light shows, we're kind of one of the only companies who seriously does it. You know, there's some others out there who offer services and stuff, but it's very much a back burner thing for them. We're one of the only ones in the world that like seriously offers it. And, you know, it's hard to start an industry essentially. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad you said it. You know, passion, it's foundational, I think, to this kind of work. And talking a little bit before your, your background, you, you have a video background. It's this kind of beautiful mix of technical know-how with artistic visualizing what a show can look mm -hmm. like. It could look like I can see that passion come out and, uh, and it, it, that kind of pad, that's kind of stuff that bleeds into your customer service. It bleeds into your product. It spreads across your entire business. And so, uh, very important. I'm glad you brought that up. Jacob, I really want to say thank you for coming on this podcast and sharing your experience, giving us an overview of these drone night shows. And I would love to have you back on here. Maybe do a little deeper dive next time. Yeah, for sure. I, I could talk about it all day, all night, and into weeks ahead. <laughs> yeah, cool. Thanks again, Jacob. And if you have a drone question, we would love to find the answer to it. You can go on to ydq8.io, type in your question there, and we will find someone who can answer it. Or if you're part of the Drone Launch Connect community, type in your question there, and somebody will probably get to it before I can. The community is very active in Drone Launch Connect, and people are asking questions all the time, and they're getting answered before I can get to them. But if we see him there, I will pursue it. We'll find someone who can answer it. Until then, we'll see you in the sky.